Hey, really quick before we start the podcast, if you're a returning listener, we would ask that you would do us a favor and rate and review the show. We are not big at asking these things, but we're really working hard to get our podcast in the top of the health and nutrition category, not just the top 100. And I think this takes less than a minute to drop that rating and review. So if you could do that, we would really appreciate it and love you for a really long time. All right, guys, let's dive in and start the show. You hear all the bull about diet and exercise. Carbs are evil. Do more cardio. Never eat bread or cookies again. Just do a juice cleanse. We get it. We fell for all of the BS too. It's time to go right to the source with the truth about how to live a healthy, sustainable lifestyle. I am Liz. And I'm Becca. We are your nutrition educators and this is The Food Code. Y'all, it is Friday, Friday. Oh boy. You know, funny story. When I was at school in Memphis. Oh Lord. I like heavily adopted the Southern accent. Oh yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Like made an effort to be Southern (laughs) when I went to school in Memphis. And I will say my freshman roommate was like from the boonies in Texas, Mm -hmm. like very farm. And she was very, very like, I'm fixing to go to the store. Like (laughs) that was her. That was my freshman roommate. And so super nice. She was on the basketball team. She ended up not staying there the whole after her freshman year. But anyways, um, so like I kind of picked a lot of things up from her and I was just thinking about it. Y'all is definitely one that has stuck with me. I say y'all a lot. Yeah. When I studied abroad or just particularly when I'm around my sister uh from copenhagen denmark i totally pick up those accents Mm -hmm. um i remember my mom telling me she's like you always pick up accents of other people like no matter like mimic them and you don't like subconsciously like i'm just doing it i don't even realize i'm doing it uh so yeah i i do want to still that's one of my life goals is to learn another language oh gosh that's overwhelming I mean, I could try to learn Russian because obviously that would probably be the easiest. That would be, that would be the most helpful. But, you know, I think I've shared this before. It's just a really harsh language. It like is. I always think that Art and his mom are arguing and they're not. They're just speaking to each other in Russian. And it's just, I, it always just sounds very angry. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I would love to learn another language. I mean, French studied abroad in France and traveled there. I think it's a beautiful language. I have Joy de Vivre tattooed on me, so that might be a good one one of I my have goals. None that I would I mean, I should have I should probably know more Spanish than I do given how long I studied it. Oh yeah. You you lose it if you don't you, you know. Well, I think the best way to learn a language, you have to be immersed in it. You have yes. to be like immersed in the culture, forced to speak mm-hmm. it, you know, I yeah. I probably know more Danish than I do Spanish anymore. Because, I mean, I was in Denmark with my sister for, you know, every summer for a couple weeks. And anyways, so we're going to surprise you guys a little bit today. Well, first and foremost, we have to re-announce this because this is still going on through the end of July that we are going to be doing a giveaway for the mystery box. Mm -hmm. Very excited about the mystery box. We were actually thinking of all the things that we're going to put in it today. Mm -hmm. Um, So our favorite partners and brands are going to be in there. Yes. I love our partners. Um... But yeah, so make sure that you leave a review. Yep. Write so a review. Write a review, take a screenshot, send it to us. You can post it in our private Facebook group. You can email it to us, info at fitmomlife.com. So what we're going to be doing monthly is giving away a box with $100 or more value. This one's going to be more than $100. Um, and so when we talk about our partners, you guys know that we love LMNT Electrolytes. There's a link in the show notes. You do with that link specifically, you get an extra sample pack of LMNT when you order like a box. Mm -hmm. So you get essentially what, like 15 extra packets or something. Yeah. It's awesome. They have so many flavors Mm -hmm. and then you can decide like what flavors are your favorite. I'm super excited. I just got another watermelon box because we gave all of them away and I've been out of watermelon and it made me sad. Yeah. I I love my watermelon. So I was so set on that mango chili forever. And then I switched to kind of like raspberry and yes watermelon is i think my top next to grapefruit because grapefruit's so good and grapefruit's almost out of stock so if you guys want to try it click the link in the show notes and then our other one of our other partners is first form so we talk all the time about our cookie dough bars that our boys love we love oh my gosh carson gets so sad when we run out yeah 
He's a cookie bar. <laughs> cookie bar. Where's my cookie bar? Marcus came in the bathroom today and he's like, mommy, Becca, bar. And I was like, oh, you want a bar because you see Becca eating a bar. Um, so first form, they are fantastic. A lot of great quality supplements, um, very high quality protein powders, which we really like. They just came out with Key Lime vegan protein powder, which uh, I'm going to try this weekend. Actually, one of my friends bought it and she's going to bring it over for me because I have the formula one, just the regular. So uh, first form, there's going to be some goodies from there in the box as well. And then some other things that we can't share with you guys. So it's a mystery and you'll have to leave us a rating and review and send it over to us wherever yep. you're listening to this. It could be Spotify, iTunes. And the reason that we do this is, you know, we've mentioned in the last uh, few episodes is because we don't advertise. We don't run paid ads. We want you guys to have a good listening experience experience and uh, not interrupt every single episode with the advertisements. So today's podcast that we're going to kind of surprise you guys with is that we want you to know we are so proud of you. Yes. And here's the thing. I know a lot of people love Friday fires. Like that's probably what we get more than anything else is people like, I felt like your Friday fire was speaking to me. But th- let's be honest, like Friday fires are a little harsh. It's the tough love. It's the things that make you feel like, okay, I'm not doing enough. Maybe I need to try harder. Maybe there's some things I still need to work on. And I think that that's all well and good. And it's important to know that we have faults and to be aware of those faults and to be constantly working on those faults. But I think sometimes you just need to hear you're doing a good job. Mm -hmm. And if you aren't doing a good job, like you can be the first one to know that and you need to probably make some changes. But like I was telling Liz the other night, I sat down to dinner at 9 p.m. with Nick after we put Carson down and it had been a really long day. And I was like, I'm just so tired. Like, it just hits me right now. And he's like, well, that's because you do it all. You're an amazing mom and you're an amazing wife and you cook dinner for me. And I think part of it is like he's about to leave me for the whole weekend to go golfing. So he probably (laughs) feels bad. But it's nice to hear it once in a while. It's nice to be told that, that they see it, you know. And so we are telling you Sometimes look at everything you've done versus everything you still need to do and be proud of yourself. Yeah. And look how far you've come. You know, even if the weight is not where you want it to be, maybe you've really been intentional with focusing on your health, changing out, you know, some of the habits or changing out uh, some of the foods that you were consuming for healthier choices that play a role in longevity, right? Maybe it's that you've continued to show up and just take that 1% better you know, every day mentality and you're working on yourself, but you're not seeing, you know, crazy changes uh, externally. Guys, remember that everything starts internally. Like we could go down the rabbit hole and we're going to do another podcast about, you know, all diseases start in the gut, but internally, that is what matters. When we look at our mental and emotional state, if you can shift into being a better person, a better version of you, how you show up for yourself, all of the other things that you want physically will happen if you start to push yourself, right? And you start to really uh, be consistent. And I'm actually getting ready to post something this week regarding, you know, people who try to be perfect all the time often prevent themselves from progress because they stall out, right? They're just, you know, expecting too much that's unrealistic rather than just doing small things consistently, you know, things that are done over time, and then they can see consistent progress there. And so that's one thing that, you know, we just want to drive home for you guys today is that understand we are not perfect either. And I was sharing this with Becca as we were walking today on our second workout uh, for 75 hard. One of the things that Jason mentioned to us at the end of the podcast on Wednesday, he's the CEO of Malk. You know, he said, I've had the opportunity to listen to your podcast and just thank you guys so much for what you're doing, what you're sharing with the world. Um, to us, I mean, we got off that podcast and it's just like revitalizing because it's nice to know that people appreciate that and that our knowledge and our education that we're sharing and we're giving away for free after thousands and thousands of dollars of, uh, you know, courses and education and studying and hours upon hours creating content. It's really nice to hear that. And then, you know, just to hear that he was saying, you know, from a a male standpoint, how this is helping him and his wife and their family do better for their kids. And that's what we want. Ultimately, is like we want to have an impact on people. And please know that when we're working with our clients, like Friday fire messages 
are not the way that we coach, right? <laughs> we get to know our clients Sometimes. <laughs> on a very intimate level. And depending upon the person, the personality, of course, there can be some tough love and some tough questions that we ask, but we're not, you know, on coaching calls, just like hounding out Friday fire all day. No, it's like really understanding that life is hard and we see the challenges. We face the challenge. We're not immune to those things. So that's what we want to share with you guys today, just to encourage you. And I would also encourage you to encourage others. If you see somebody doing something good, give them a compliment. Mm -hmm. Like I was at the grocery store on Sunday. I popped over there to grab a couple of things and peaches were on sale and we've been doing air fryer peaches. So good. Um, you just put them in the air fryer for 10 minutes, obviously cut it in half, de-seed it. And then I put some, um, so delicious, uh, cool whip on top. And it's just, anyways, one of my favorite um, summertime treats. And so as I was picking out my peaches, there was a older lady there and she was so sweet. She goes, oh, but these ones are 89 cents. I said, oh, I think, you know, they might be the same as, you know, the ones that I'm picking out. Uh, that's what, you know, was advertised. And we got into the conversation about the air fryer peaches. And she said, you know what? My girlfriend down in Springfield ironic. Like, what's the irony here? I grew up in Springfield. She said, she's been trying to get me to buy an air fryer. And now you're telling me about this. And I said, this is so funny. I grew up in Springfield. And I said, yes, you should absolutely. So I was telling all the things you could do with the air fryer. And I said, you should always check out Costco or Bed Bath & Beyond to save some money on them and everything. And I just walked away from that conversation feeling so good, not because I you know, was just conversing with her and able to share ideas with her, but just to know that People are still kind in the grocery store. And that's just a little comment that you can say to somebody can brighten their day. Like, honestly, that conversation that I had with her this elderly lady that lives by herself, it probably just brightened her day. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Old people love to talk. And they love to have my conversations. Day. Yeah, absolutely. And that's, you know, I, I think that we can get so wrapped up in our own stresses and our own world and always in a rush. That's something that I've been really paying attention to is like, I'm constantly in a rush. I'm kind and sometimes people just need you to hold the door for them. They just need you to say hello and smile at them. Like they just need, that's actually really funny. You mentioned the grocery store because there's this checkout person at Meyer that like we go to the same Meyer every weekend. I see her all the time there. And one time she has been like the one time I went in her checkout, Carson also spilled our coffee all over our groceries. And so she seemed very perturbed and annoyed with the fact that all of our groceries were covered in coffee, which I probably would be too as a checkout person, but like just wasn't super nice and like gave the stink eye a lot while she was checking us out. And so ever since then, I've seen her and I've had this like bad taste in my mouth with her. Like she seems like just not a happy person. And so this Sunday, I was there with both kids by myself and Taylor, I didn't realize at some point, had taken her leg from like the big opening and slotted it into one of the tight ra openings in the front of the stroller and her foot was stuck. And I was like, initially I tried to get it out and it like didn't come out. And I was like, okay, you got your foot in here. Like it has to come out. And the lady that I always see saw and she goes, oh my God, you poor thing, you little baby, you poor thing. Let's help get you out. Let's help get this out. Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay. And now my complete, my view completely changed. And it just is a reminder to myself of like, one, never pass judgment on people. Mm -hmm. um, some people can just be having a hard day. And that's something I've talked to a lot of people about lately is like, especially if you feel like you're alone on your journey or you're in a tough place on your journey, also know that like not everyone's going to approve of you. Not everyone's going to like you. And that's okay. Because one there's just different types of people in the world. Like not everyone's going to drive with you. And if you're being authentic to yourself, you probably shouldn't have everyone like you. It's just, it's a reality. It is what it is. But another piece of it is like, there are just some miserable people in this world and it's a them problem. It's not a you problem. And so if you are struggling with like, oh, this person's, you know, uh, not approving of my life changes or this, this coworker or this person on, you know, social media is just really upsetting me because of their political views or whatever it is. Again, we have to come back to like, how are you being authentic to yourself and what you want for your life and being proud of that? Because I think that is where a lot of this lies is when we are in this place of just not being happy and feeling like we're not doing enough, feeling like we're not, you know, enough in general as a person, you don't, you're not worthy, you know, all those feelings that can become really, really detrimental and negative. Ask yourself, like, what are my expectations and what are my actions? And I guess this will get a little bit Friday fire for you. If you're unhappy, it's probably because there's a disconnect there. There's a disconnect between what you expect yourself to be and what you want to be and what you're actually acting to do to accomplish that. 
And so sometimes people just live unhappy and don't ever realize that that's the reason. Don't ever look at that disconnect. Don't ever evaluate what they could be doing differently. But today we want you to understand like, one, the journey is not easy. And you need to sometimes look back. And even if you're not doing all the things that you wish you were doing, be proud of what you have changed. And if you haven't changed anything, okay, go fucking change something. Like make a difference in your life. But for most people, maybe they've you know improved their habits and on vacation, they drank less than they normally would. They came back less bloated. They didn't gain weight on vacation, but it wasn't perfect. So, And I didn't work out every day, so it's a fail. No, it's not a fail. Be proud of how you changed what would have been two years ago. Mm-hmm. Say you're drinking more water than you used to, but you're still not perfect with your t- hitting your intake levels. Okay, be proud of the water consumption that you've really worked hard to make a new habit in your life and then continue working on the other things. Like take a second and be proud of what you accomplished versus just constantly breaking yourself down for everything you feel you aren't doing. Because there's no, there's no benefit in that. Like, yeah, you should evaluate your life. You should be aware of some faults that you have and be working on them. But just be bashing yourself and hating on yourself for not doing what you think you should be doing is very unproductive and unhelpful. And that's the message that we kind of want to get across today is like, good job. Be proud of yourself. Be always working for more. Absolutely. Don't be content. Never be content. But also don't come at it from a place of just hating yourself. Like that, that is not helpful when you're like, I just can't get it together. I'm such a mess. I need to listen to my own advice. I need to like, it's just, that's not helpful. Mm -hmm. It's not helpful at all. And I think too, like pondering, like I know all the things to do. I just can't do them. Well, you're wasting time right there saying that, right? And you're basically saying that you're not doing them because they're not important to you. So stop that and start looking at how can I be better? What can I do today to be better? What choice can I make? What decision can I, you know, make that would be different? That's 1% better than I normally would make. Can I order a side salad instead of fries? Can I get a small instead of a large, right? Like whatever that is. And it's just funny that you bring that up about uh, the lady at the grocery store because I'm reading uh, Dale Carnegie's book again. Oh, it's so good. How to Win Friends and Influence People. And there's a specific example in there around, uh, you know, a cashier at the grocery store Mm -hmm. or whatnot. Um, And so if you guys haven't read that, I think it's a really good book to read. This is my second time reading it. Uh, I think it's one that actually people should read every year. Art and I were talking about that because especially with what's going on in today's world, you also have to remember that you don't know what's going on in somebody else's life. So Mm -hmm. we got into this conversation because uh, Sunday morning before I went to the store, Art had gone to Menards because he's doing uh, some projects for our house still. And he said, I met a real Karen this morning. I said, what happened? He said, well, I was trying to get into the car to leave and this lady parked over the line. So there was not enough room for me to get the door open to be able to get into the car. Oh, and the worst. she was sitting in her car. And so he just like waved at her and was like, you know, there's not enough room here or whatever. She gave him the middle finger and started <gasps> screaming F you basically. And he was like, okay, well, like you're over the line. I can't get into my car. And so at whatever point she like rolled down her back window and was just screaming F you and this and that. And he's like, all right. So he was like trying to figure out like how he's going to finagle himself to get in there. And then when he finally got into the car to leave, as he's backing up, she starts backing up intentionally, like following our car, trying to hit him. And Oh my gosh. I was like, okay, so this is a very intense situation, right? right? Imagine what's happening there. And what we were talking about is like, man, you just don't know what's going on in somebody else's Mm -hmm. life. Like I think about the day that, um, you know, my mom got the diagnosis of ALS. Like we were driving actually to see Art's grandmother who was in the hospital and nearing the end of her life. And my mom calls and we get this news like three blocks away. And so of course I'm a, you know, bawling mess and whatnot. And I just keep thinking like, you never know what is going on in somebody's life. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, and so just if you guys need to reread that book, uh, send it to a friend. But I think it's just really important. Like some of the fundamental things that he talks about is don't criticize, condemn or complain because you don't know what's happening mm-hmm. with that other person. Give honest and sincere appreciation. Like when I talk about giving somebody a compliment, actually give them a sincere compliment. Like you can mm-hmm. always find the good. Yet so many people are looking for the bad. And, and it kind of goes to what you were saying. You know, it's like, Look at what you can be doing. Look for the good things that you can be doing instead of 
wallowing on the things that you're not doing and, you know, basically criticizing yourself. Uh, and then the third thing is like arouse people uh, or arouse in the other person an eager want. And so how do you do these things? Well, you have to be interested in what they're interested in, mm. right? So you kind of have to stroke through ego a little bit. But his one of his main principles is, yeah, smile in everything that you do. Remember people's name or call them by their name if they have a name tag at the grocery store. Be a good listener. A lot of times people don't want your opinion. They are just happy when you listen. And that's one thing that, you know, I've, as I've been rereading this, even thinking about things that I can do just with my personal life, business, obviously, um, family, man, like there's a section that talks about like family and how hard this is to do uh, with your family. Um, and so, you know, the bottom line is that if you want to have good relationships and you want to be friendly and be kind, um, you got to make other people feel important. And yep. even though you feel like you're in the right, a lot of times kindness goes a really, really long way. You are going to get more by being kind than you will by imagine if art had responded to that lady in a negative way. I mean, she probably really would have flipped her lid, mm -hmm. you know? And so just like also remaining calm in the situation too. Um, because again, the world that we live in right now, you just never know what's going to happen with right people popping off. I know people get triggered real easily these days. And I think it's just, you know, unfortunately the state of the world, there's so much stress already underlying with people, especially people that don't manage the stress very well. Um, anything can be a tipping point for mm -hmm. someone. And so, yeah, I totally agree. And I think again, like look at what fills your cup. I don't know many people unless you have a very dark soul. I don't know many people that don't feel better after complimenting someone else or after being kind to someone else or doing a favor for someone else. Here's the caveat. I will say if you only give to other people and you never give to yourself, this can be draining. You can start to become, it can become a draining thing. But at the end of the day, just remember what other people are going through. You know, remember during your day, that's something I always at, tell myself is like, okay, if someone makes a nasty comment on a Facebook post, if someone, you know, at the, in the parking lot or driving, uh, definitely driving in traffic. I think this is a very, very common thing that a lot of people see. Like someone cuts you off or someone who knows that they're like, I always look at the time whenever someone seems to be in a rush. I'm like, Oh, it's eight Oh two. That pro person's probably late for work. They're probably trying to get to work right now, <laughs> trying to get to the thing that they need to be at on time. Um, and so I always give people the benefit of the doubt. And then when it comes to you guys, like we were saying, you got to look in reverse sometimes, like don't dwell on the past by any means, but realize that there are accomplishments that have been made because I think we can get so caught up in what we haven't done and what we haven't accomplished and what we still aren't that we never actually appreciate where we are or what we've done in a positive way to get to where we are. And that's something, you know, I definitely struggle with sometimes, but been working on too of like tooting my own horn in terms of we do a lot. You know, we, we, Liz and I are not perfect by any means. There were a lot of moments this morning where I was not wanting to be patient with my son because it's just hard to be patient with him sometimes. I just <laughs> tell everybody he was out on the swing set of the neighbor's this, house. Okay. So this morning, Nick had to leave early for work. And so I have to get my kids in the car with me to my mom's house in the morning on Tuesdays. It's kind of tough because I have to pack a lot of stuff. We leave, we drive a far way. Um, and Taylor's obviously in an age where like she's mobile, but she's also dangerous to herself. She doesn't understand that like stairs are not safe, you know, that kind of thing. Um, and so I'm constantly with Taylor. I'm trying to get ready. I tried to prep as much as I could last night because I knew Nick was going to leave early. And so at like 6.30, Carson's awake, which he shouldn't have been. He should have slept later. So he was tired. And Nick went downstairs to leave. I was still finishing getting myself and Taylor ready. And I finished getting Taylor dressed. And I called downstairs for Carson because Carson followed Nick downstairs. Carson didn't answer. And I was like, fuck, he's probably outside because he, the kid loves being outside, which is great. But it's not great when, you know, he's four years old he's not old enough to take care of himself or no good and bad people. Um, and so I go downstairs and I go outside and the garage is open. I'm like, great. And so calling for him, not answering, go in the front yard. He's not there. And so luckily our neighbors next door have a swing set. Usually he's there. He was on that. He was in his Crocs, his cookie monster onesie and his, he has like a crossing guard vest that he calls his worker man vest that he wears constantly. <laughs> He's, he's an interesting, fun child. Um, but anyways, so he's wearing all of that. And I'm like, Carson, you got to come inside. He's like, I don't want to come inside. I want to stay on the swing set. And we go inside. I get him inside. I don't want to get dressed. I don't want to leave. I don't want to go to Ma's house. And like then 
he notices I packed my lunchbox and his lunchbox, which set him into a crying fit because he didn't pack his lunchbox. I packed his lunchbox. (laughs) And then he threw all of the food that I put in there on the ground and went to go pack more food from the refrigerator, was in the refrigerator, just leaving it open. Taylor's in her Batmobile. She's like running into him and his feet. He starts crying because she ran into his heel and it hurt. And then Taylor's pulling the salad dressings out of the door of the refrigerator in her Batmobile and like running around the house with Thousand Island dressing and liquid smoke and like trying to eat the bottle tops. And Carson was just being an extra, extra difficult toddler this morning, which is, you know, he was tired, I'm sure. It was just a lot. It was a lot to be patient with my child <laughs> oh today. Oh my God. And, you know, Liz and I are not perfect. I yeah. have lots of moments where I'm like, I don't know if I can do it. I don't know if I can do all the things that I need to do today because I just, a lot of my energy just got taken in this first hour that I've been awake right now. <laughs> well, I think you should also preference that you live in a very safe area, by we the do. way. It's we not do. like Carson is like out and like you know, dangerous roads and streets or anything like that. But, you know, somebody said something a few weeks ago, just, you know, regarding how they see what other people do on social media to make them feel inferior and whatnot. And here's the deal, guys. Uh, My response is that motherhood is just total chaos every day. You're just navigating and pivoting and adjusting. And basically, like, I feel like you're kind of in a video game, just trying not to get shot at by darts. Um, Like literally real life. uh, If you have boys that have darts, uh, that also is a thing. But, you know, what one of the things that makes us better and keeps us sane is our routine and our focus on ourself. And that all starts with our non-negotiables, uh, showing up consistently, asking for support and getting up when we don't want to get up early in the morning. Like mm-hmm. I've had Marcus, uh, in our bed two out of the last four nights, which is very abnormal. Like he's not in our bed unless it's just like, 2 a.m. and I'm just I can't anymore and he's just coming to my bed because he's in the phase of like he thinks that there's a monster at his door and whatnot um and so like this morning it's like Art and I at 5 a.m. sneaking out of the room hoping that he you know continues to sleep mm-hmm. and he was up by 5 45 which at least he got we got 45 minutes of quiet downstairs for you know a little bit but um we don't want to get up every day at 5 5 30 that's my only option though yeah yeah and here's the thing is like, I'm not willing to settle for the way that I feel if I don't. And I I just think that if you're somebody who's unhappy and you're not asking for help and you're not putting things into place that you need to put into place to make you happy and fill your cup up, that's where you start. Don't even start with calories macros like we're going to do a whole nother episode on macros because you know we've even been talking so much with some of our clients like it doesn't even matter what your energy or calorie density is if nutrients aren't there and you're not fixing the dysfunction Uh, but I digress on that subject for today so you know just start with showing up for you and it does not have to be that I wake up an hour and a half earlier than I normally do start and back it in with like 15 minutes go for a short 10 minute walk in the morning, get sunlight on your eyes. That can help a lot in terms of your energy and just starting the day off. Right. I think there's a a totally different uh, approach to your day. Like for example, I'll just talk on Becca's behalf now, like before all that went down um, with (laughs) Carson and uh, Taylor this morning, she had her first workout done, Mm -hmm. right? She had gotten up, she did her first workout. She did the things that made her feel good and in turn showed up more patient absolutely a frustrating oh, yeah. situation but imagine if you had woken up to that like you rolled out of bed you didn't get the things done that you wanted you probably would have lost your shit and probably would have oh, absolutely them. absolutely i already had felt like i had gotten me in i had gotten what i needed to fill my cup in and so i was able to give to carson at that time i was able to not totally lose it on him like yeah there were some stern words because i think he's also at an age where like he's trying to test his limits and i need to have that stern word in place for him to realize like no, we can't just do whatever we want all day, every day. Um, and so for sure, if I wouldn't have that workout in, and I've had mornings like that where like I sleep in and my kids are the one that wakes me, are the ones that wake me up. And I feel like I'm in total chaos. Like I feel like I don't know what to do first. I've got nothing done that I want to get done. And this morning I had already packed my lunchbox. Yes, last night, my lunchbox, <laughs> like seven. I'd packed my Wonder Woman. No, I packed my lunchbox to get to Liz's last night. I made sure everything that my clothes were all set out. I knew what I was wearing so that I could take a quick shower because usually Taylor Taylor was awake at like 6.05. I took five minutes to finish my workout. I got her showered with her in the bathroom with me so I could keep an eye out. Like 
all of these things allowed me to be there for Carson when he needed me to be patient with him. And if I didn't do those things for myself, like I didn't sleep great last night. I'm not sleeping great at all right now because my stupid hand is a jacked up mess. And so like it's keeping me up at night, but I would rather wake up, get some time into myself than get more bad sleep because that's essentially what it would be. Well, and I think just in total transparency, when you wake up to that, you almost have like this feeling of resentment. Mm -hmm. Right. Kind of like what we talked about with um, Dana when she was, you know, talking about her son and like all of like when they were in the the depths of everything that was going on. She's like, I loved my son, but I didn't like him. Mm -hmm. And I think far more um, often than not, when parents are feeling frustration, resentment, you know, whatever emotions that you want to insert there uh, with your children it's because you're not doing the things that you need to do for yourself. And that's the hard truth. I mean, that's tough love, but there is no other way to say it. Mm-hmm. You have to prioritize yourself. Nobody else can prioritize yourself for you, but you, you are the one that has to make that decision. But we also want to tell you that whatever you're doing right now, we're proud of you for doing it. Mm-hmm. If you got up 15 minutes earlier and you went for a walk, I'm proud of you for doing that. If you've been getting up an hour earlier. I'm proud of you for doing that. I'm proud of you for doing everything that you do that is better than what you could have done. And this is where we look, you know, with our clients at the spectrum of like good, better, best. What is the best option, right? That's what we want to strive for. That's what we want to aim for. We always want to be evolving. We always want to be elevating ourselves, but by no means are we going to achieve that best case scenario every day or every week. And so you have to look at like in this, you know, situation, what are better choices or sometimes good has to be good enough and that's okay. Mm -hmm. It is the fact that you keep showing up and you don't just throw up your hand and say, forget it. We're going to the drive through six nights uh, this week because I still didn't get to the grocery store. I still didn't do this. I still didn't do this. I'm going to try again next week. There are some things I think, you know, that you've heard us rant about on Friday fires that you do need to change if you haven't changed those things, like some basic things, but whatever you're doing right now to try to become a better version of yourself, we are proud of you. And so that's your Friday fire today. So as we wrap this up, a friendly reminder to leave that rating and review, send us a screenshot to info at fitmomlife.com or post it in the Fit Mom Facebook group. Links are in the show notes and we hope that you guys have a fabulous weekend. We'll be back on Monday. Thank you for listening to The Food Code. If this episode resonated with you, please share, rate, and review as this helps us reach others around the world. With that, thank you for listening. We'll be back soon. Love you guys.